waiting for that pan to just start to smoke just a little bit, and then we're going to add the scallops in there, sear them nice and crispy. The other thing with scallops is, don't ever cook them all the way through. They become rubber bands. There's, you know, they're, they're crisp and juicy and delicious, but once you overcook them, they're rubbery and they're, you know, the flavor's becoming too, too much. So you want to just sear one side nice and crispy. Do you use vegetable oil? All the time. I only cook with corn oil or soy oil because they have very high flash points and they don't impart any additional flavor into the food. If I want flavor into the food, I'm going to use a finishing oil. I'll use it at the end before it goes out. I'll have it in a squeeze bottle or just drizzle a little over like a truffle oil, uh, an avocado. Uh, what about like butter. cannoli? A canola oil. Canola oil is a vegetable oil. Oh, okay. It's a corn, you know, generally corn. Right. You always want to use a, a vegetable oil that has a high flash point. Canola, corn, soy. The other thing you want to make sure you do is not overcrowd the pan. Because what happens is you have this pan that's nice and hot. You put too much in it, it brings the temperature down, and then some things cook and some things don't. Every pan has a hot spot in it. It's metal. You know, metal doesn't heat evenly unless it's a cast iron pan. So, you want to make sure that you always don't overload the pan, and then you're always just kind of spinning the pan around once you know where the hot spot is. And the other important thing to notice, you always season the side that you're going to put down first, so you can season the other side. Would you ever use a cast iron pan to use food? If you have one, I would use it for everything. It's the most even, even heated, old heat. What kind of pan? They're cast iron. The cast iron is a wonderful one of the most wonderful inventions. It, it holds heat very evenly. It's nice and heavy, so it doesn't cool down as fast because they're thick and it holds the heat. So, cast iron, whatever possible. These are just regular aluminum saute pans. So, now what we're really looking to achieve here is we're really looking to get the natural proteins and sugars to come out and into the pan. That crackle that you hear, is the moisture being pulled out of the scallop and in that moisture is sugar and natural proteins. Those two things will add a nice delicious golden crust. That golden crust is the sugars and the proteins caramelizing, making it caramel, which is basically just a reduction or intensification of the flavors. You're really concentrating those flavors on the top. So that crust translates into flavor. Yeah. So don't be afraid to let it let it crust up. Now, what you don't want to do is mistakenly let it burn. Always look around the edges. I don't know if you guys can see, but it starts to brown around the edges. The edges will burn before the center will. So look for if it's getting too dark. Don't pan it. Don't take it out of the pan. Just turn the flame down and move it off the stove for a second. The other thing you do, you want to, don't want to do, is you don't want to rush it. A lot of times, you know, you'll think something's sticking and you'll try and, oh, it's burning. Well, it's not. That's You're waiting for the sugar to finish caramelizing. So, things will come out, as long as the heat's not on full blast and it's not getting torched, if it's on a steady heat, when it's ready to, when it's ready to come off, it'll come off on its own. So, don't try and force it. And what I can, here's one, see this one's ready to come off? See that beautiful color? That's what you're looking for. So don't force it. Don't don't think that oh it's burning. You can see if it's burning, and you can control that by you know just think of it as a car. You either when you when you need to accelerate the cooking process, you turn the gas up or you step on the gas pedal. When you need to slow down, you just you back off the gas pedal. That's all you're doing. So if it's stuck, it's not ready to come off. Nope. Okay. See these guys? They're not ready to come off. You see this one? Yeah, he's starting to wiggle. Yeah. He's almost ready. I'm just gonna let him do his thing. Just let him do his thing. Every once in a while, you always just want to give it a push on the side, just to see, you know, the sugar may be caramel and it may be, may be clinging to a piece of the pan that, you know, a, a, a crevice in the pan, the caramel oozed in there and it's locked in. So you always want to just give it a little touch. See how that guy just came off on his own? Mm. Now what you want to also notice is the cooking process. You don't want to let it do its own thing for too long because it may overcook. So you may have to accelerate the gas and, and speed up the cooking process. 
you can see how the scallop, the raw scallop, is very opaque. You see how these guys are starting to get white around the edges? That's what we're looking for. See how they just pop up on their own? That one, see that guy? He peeled off a little bit because I forced him. You don't want to do that. See how he just popped up on his own and how perfect it is? Got my name on it. Now this would apply to everything you cook, is that correct? Everything. You wait till it freezes itself. It doesn't matter what it is. That's chicken, beef, pork, veal, lamb, doesn't matter what it is. Just turn it down a little bit. And if it's too hot, if you notice that it's getting too dark, pull it off. Let it cool down and then put it back on. Now, notice how short I cooked this guy. That's it. That's all you need. These little ones. You want it to be slightly translucent in the center. It should kind of look like an Oreo cookie. See how this is starting to get white on the bottom, but it's not quite there? You should have white, and then you should have translucency in the middle. Oreo cookie. Yeah. I had to take those guys out because they were uh, slightly overcooking. You don't want to do that. Now you just want to add a little bit of butter to richen this up. Not a lot, just a little bit. The second side doesn't matter if you have the crust. It's key that the top does. Because by the time you get a crust on the second side, it's going to be overcooked. You just put salt and pepper on them. That's it. What better way to taste something that doesn't need anything now let me ask you this, getting to the salt and pepper question. Who knows, there's only two seasonings, who knows what they are? Salt and pepper? Nope, salt is one, pepper is not. Oh, okay. I don't know. What did somebody say? Sugar. sugar. Salt know. and sugar. Salt and sugar are the only two things that are naturally found in everything. So you're not altering the flavor, you're enhancing the natural flavors. That's why they're seasoning juice. You're adjusting the natural seasoning. Pepper is something that's not naturally found in anything and it alters the flavor. So that is called a flavoring agent. Basil, oregano, those things are flavoring agents. Onion powder, garlic powder, flavoring agents. They change the natural molecular makeup of what you're eating. Don't worry, I will be cooking more scallops. See, that guy was stuck right here. You can see where... And all of this right here, Here's another, here's another thing. All of this on the bottom of the pan, that's not burnt. That's not garbage. We don't want to get rid of that. This is what the French call fond. We do okay? that all the time. This is flavor. This is going to be delicious. And I'll show you how to not break your arm cleaning that pan. See, now I have one sauté yeah, pan left over here and over here, and I have a couple more things to make. I need this pan. So, all you gotta do is add some liquid. This is known as deglazing. You're gonna you're gonna deglaze the fond and break the fond up from the bottom of the pan. That was just white wine. You can very simply oh, use water, oh. any kind of liquid, water, chicken stock, vegetable stock, whatever you want. Drink but it. notice how that pan is becoming clean. This is how you would be making a pan sauce. So if I was going to make a, a sauce for the scallops, if this was an entree, the scallops would go on the plate, I would do this, I would let it reduce down, and then I would hit it with a little bit of butter to emulsify it, and I'll show you guys that in a second. But while we're waiting, for, while we're waiting for that to reduce down, we'll start getting this other pan hot. So I can, make, so I can get these scallops in the pan for others to taste. Uh, please taste these while they're warm. Go, baby. 